Now, hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be making two slitting saw arbors. So I recently received some slitting saws, two different types and sizes and styles from two very kind channel donators. So Dave Tyshurst, thank you very much. And as already been seen, these are from Martin Curry as a bit of a thank you for the cylinder block that I machined up for him for his model steam engine. And if you've not seen those videos, or that video, go back and have a look in the back catalogue and you'll see what that's all about. So, to key or not to key, that is the question. So, all of these come with a keyway slot in. It's quite difficult to produce a keyway short enough, or a key short enough in an arbour to do this, you know, without bottoming out on the end cap, and that will become clear when we get into the manufacture. There are ways around that, and I'm probably probably going to key these. There's, there's two arguments with this. If you key them, if you lock them up, they just smash and break. If you don't key them, they could spin on the arbor if they lock up, which saves the slitting saw, probably ruins your arbor, um, and you need to make a new one. And yeah, if it, you also you could get them slipping at any time during cut, which again you don't want and would probably end up breaking the cutter anyway. So key, keying is the best way, so I'm probably going to go for keying these. We'll have a look as we get into it and see how difficult that is. And I've got some E&8 stock to make these out of, so not your basic mild steel, a bit of, bit of carbon content to it to make it a bit tougher. And we might do a little bit of soft soldering and when it comes to making the keys, if we get that far, we might even do a bit of shaper work. So there's a lot going to be going on in this episode. So without any more waffling, let's crack on. Okay, so I'm just setting up for turning the first of the splitting saw arbors. Now I've had a change of plan and what I'm going to do is turn a long one with a an ISO 30 back end on it. More because I've not turned an ISO 30 back end yet, so this is an op opportunity for me to do that it's not going to be in the right material but it's going to be a good exercise for me so I'm going to do a long holder and a short holder of two different styles so I've got my tenths of a thou indicator in there I've got a bit of gauge rod in the chuck and drill rod and it's not super perfect but that's within about three tenths of a thou I've run out and if I scan up and down the length of the drill rod over the length of the collet that I'm going to put on there probably a tenth of a thou if that run out so happy that that's set in correctly if you're ever doing anything like this you know I've got this nipped reasonably light in the jaws and just going around trying all the different pinions and different rotations of the drill rod until you can get something that clocks in pretty good like that is often a way to get something running really true in a three jaw chuck without having to do any other influencing so that's more than good enough for what I'm about to do so I'll bring you back in a moment when we're on to the next stage okay so we've put an ER32 tool holder onto that bit of gauge rod and I've got my clock on there I've not zeroed it but you can see what number it's on so side to side on that parallel shank there's no movement and in spinning I've got about a tenth and a half to two tenths of a thou which is more than good enough for what I'm about to do so what I'm going to do now is knock my compound slide over at the right angle with this clock still set up in the tool post and I'm going to dial in and clock my taper till I know that my compound slide is set at the exact taper for an ISO 30. I'll bring you back when I've done that. Okay, we've got our compound slide set, so I'm just going to wind on here to a zero. Don't forget this is tenths of a thou. That does drop off. So that moves when I started winding. Let's just reset that. Back on zero. 
zero, 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 and then right at the back end it just dropped off a little bit by a couple of tenths, which I think is just the way this has been manufactured. So I don't think I could get that any closer than that. So I'm more than happy that my compound slide is now set to the right angle for an ISO 30 taper. Okay, so we've faced the end of the bar, we've centre drilled, so quick tip, find a clean bit of paper before you do that tip, John. If you're doing a, well, any job where you're going to put a revolving centre in and you've just had a centre drill in there, either a blast of compressed air if, you, if that's what you're using or a little wipe with a cloth, just make sure there's no swarf and leftover from the centre drill before you put your revolving centre in and you'll get much better end results in terms of accuracy. Okay, I've lost a bit of footage, so you've not missed much. I've turned this back end, which is where the thread's going to go in the back of the taper, and I'm now busy roughing out this area, which is going to be the ISO 30 taper. So I'll show you a bit of that, and then I'll bring you back after that at the next operation. So I backed myself into a bit of a corner with this setup, not thinking ahead very well, and I've got a bit of a collision between my tailstock and my compound slide. So you can see I've, I've got enough clearance now, but I've had to stand my tool out quite a long way out of the tool post, but I think we'll be okay.
Okay, that's got our first op done. So what we're going to do now is take that out of the three jaw. I'm going to switch the three jaw over for the four jaw. I'm going to get this set up in the four jaw and I'll bring you back when we're doing the second end, which is going to be quite interesting because really I was going to originally just part this off here and then I thought about it and thought I've got a couple of bits to make out of this, out of the, you know, for the other end of this and honestly I'm going to look, this bit's quite small now, there's not a lot I can do with this chucking piece so we're actually going to use the part as a chucking piece and I'm going to make the two spare bits I need out of this and then we'll, once we've done that and parted these two off we'll finish the second end while it's all in the same setup in the four jaw so I'll bring you back when we've got that set up OK we've got our four jaw on we've loaded our part up and we've got that clocked in to within a couple of tenths which is good enough for what we're doing here and you'll see why that is later and what we're going to do now is just face this off turn this stock down to the same diameter as the rest of the bar and then I'll bring you back, you don't need to watch that, it's the same as what you saw me do on the other side and I'll bring you back when we're starting to turn, there's two components to come off this end of the bar OK we've got us all turned down we're now going to start on our two pieces, one's an end cap and one's an intermediary piece to switch between two different bore sizes of splitting saws. So first job's going to be to drill, spot drill and drill a hole, clearance hole for the clamping screw. So we'll get on with that now. OK, there's our first part off, that's going to be our end cap. I'm now going to make something that's almost identical to that, but slightly longer. So I'll do that off camera because it's the same, and I'll bring you back just when we're parting off. And then the final job is to turn the end register on this blank for the slitting saws themselves. Or, well, either the slitting saws or the intermediate piece that's going to sit in between and that'll all make sense a bit later. Okay so we're ready now to do our final operation on this part so this is the main arbor that you saw me turn at the start and we're going to turn a register on this front end now for the large diameter bore splitting source.
Okay, so here's my arbor. We've just taken that out of the four jaw chuck. And before I take the four jaw chuck off the lathe, the next thing we're just going to do is pop this into the spindle on the mill. So I've checked everything's clean. And we're just going to drop this in and see how it fits. That's a good start. Tighten up the drill bar. I know you can't see what I'm doing. There's a drill bar tight. And then we'll stick a DTI on what we've done and see what that tells us. It should be pretty good, but. Okay, well, you can see that we'll just zoom in on the DTI. So we zoomed in, we're on zero. You're seeing this live, I've not checked this. So we've got 20 microns, which is just under a thou. I've run out this far down now. Some of that could be in this arbor, a little bit could be in the spindle, don't really know. So that's not a big issue at the moment. And the reason we turned this register diameter for the slitting source oversize on the lathe is we're now going to turn my milling machine into a lathe, which there are a few people who've shown this on YouTube, but not many. So whilst there's lots of people showing you milling slides on a Myford, turning a Myford into a milling machine, there aren't many videos of people turning a milling machine into a lathe. So what we're going to do now is set a tool up in my vise and we're going to come in, spin this up and we're going to finish turn this register diameter in the mill so it's all with reference to the 30 taper, how it's located in the spindle. I'll bring you back when we've got that set up.
or we've been lucky. Very lucky. There's no movement in that at all. Super. Okay, we've chucked one of our, this is our intermediate piece. We've just chucked it up in the three jaw just to see how we'd go. This three jaw is very good and I thought rather than faff around in the four jaw I need to put the three jaw on anyway for the end cap. So we'll just try it in here. So I've had my clock on it and I'm clocking this. I know it's the parted off face but it was all done in the same operation as you saw. And I've got that with no movement on it at all. And I'm clocking the OD. So the OD was turned at the same time as the... 25.4 register in the back here so they'll be concentric and I've got about one or two tenths movement on the OD and I achieved that by using different pinions in the chuck tried all three until I found the best one and we've got this gripped fairly lightly in here because I don't want to mark it so what we're going to do now is face this up and we're going to turn a similar shoulder to what we've got on the end of the arbor except 22 mil diameter rather than 25.4 and the same depth. Okay, excuse the heat and noise. We're having lots of snow again here and it's quite cold, so winter's back. So all I'm doing here is I'm putting in the dog slots into the holder. Now I don't have any dogs on my spindle yet, but I may do it at a point in the future. So while we're making this, I'm just gonna put those in and then they're there ready for if I ever put dogs in. I've done the bottom one already quick and easy way to set this up if you're doing something like this and you've got a flat enough surface big enough to get some slips gauge blocks in basically I've used those gauge blocks underneath to locate in the slot that I've already put in so that I know I've got it parallel so that when I put the one at 180 degrees in I know they're lined up so I'll show you a bit of that as we can see in the second slot Okay, after a bit of clean up and selective chemical blacking, we've got our arbor or our arbors complete. So we've got our full setup with a cancel cap screw in the end, and this will take both bore sizes, both 25.4 or 1 inch and the 22 mil now what I have done or what I've not done is I've not as I said at the start done anything with a keyway 
I decided against that as we got into the build on this. So basically we've got our 25.4 register there and our end cap with a 25.4 register underneath that locates on the arbor itself and that will tighten up for that one and then if we put our intermediate piece in we've got a 25.4 bore close fitting in the back of there and our 22mm diameter on this end for the smaller saws and again our end cap fits on now I don't get the register this time because I'm 22mm onto 25.4 but for what this is and the speed it's going to be running at <clears throat> the concentricity provided by the clamp screw will be more than good enough for that end cap it's not going to make any difference and I know that my faces are all square because they've either been turned together in the lathe or they've been turned as you saw on the milling machine so I know that they're running absolutely true to the ISO 30 taper in the spindle so we will leave that at that I'm going to do some clocking checks actually with this loaded into the spindle I'm not going to show that in this video but I will show it as and when we come to use this which will be at some point I will do a quick clock check on it at that point just to show how that's running but I'm fairly confident because of the way this has been machined it will be running as good as the saw blades allow because you know these are these are all import saw blades I've noticed there's a bit of bow on all of them so as that bow gets taken out by clamping it's obviously going to put some levels of distortion into the blades which will manifest itself as axial run out to a degree but these things all do that anyway so I won't be surprised but I'm very happy with that that's got me a nice ISO 30 arbor for slitting saws with a good length on it that will take both sizes so with all that being said we'll go back to the board and we'll close this episode out well there we go guys that gets us to the end of this video so we've gone from no slitting saw capability at all in the workshop to a dedicated ISO 30 arbor with a good length on it that will take two different sizes and bore styles of slitting saw so thank you again to David and Martin for the very kind donations of the slitting saws very much appreciated and now you can see we've got good we'll be able to use those when we need to you know with a with a decent arbor so very very happy with that I've enjoyed making that it's uh, you know I could have bought one for a few quid but I got the steel free issue steel I've enjoyed making it and it's another one of those make it up as you go along jobs and you'll see from some of the scribblings and you'll remember at the start of this video I said I was going to make two separate arbors that looked absolutely nothing like this at all so uh, another good example of what happens when you start a job without a drawing and you just let let things take you based on the stock you've got available and things like that so yeah happy with the outcome of that so and maybe one or two of you have seen something new there doing a bit of turning on a milling machine so that's all Always good just to open people's minds a little bit to the possibilities of what they can use their gear for in their workshop. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along. And we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.